All right, we're continuing to talk about this Auditor General report, once again revealing billions, billions, literally being thrown away on screw-ups and scandal. The latest AG report highlights once again that Ontario is in a huge amount of trouble led by a government that is hell-bent on wasting money, and then they deny it to anyone who challenges on them, and they get away with it. John Downs, Faith Goldie joining me to talk. I mean, this is a conversation that we have to have because you've covered off Auditor General reports. I know you've done your share, and I know you've covered this off. In my time, I've never seen numbers that I have seen in this Auditor General report to the point where you can't even... Well, I can still with us. blame you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're ill. You people. Look, a lot, yeah, you people. Here, part of the problem is that the criticism has been relentless against Kathleen Wynne for a long time, and a lot of it is warranted. How I don't is that doubt part of the that. Problem? Well, because when you're Tim Hudak and you're dumping over Kathleen Wynne or her entire government for every single move they make, and it starts to get petty, and not just Tim Hudak, a lot of the people in his party, they start to ignore it. And when you get majority government, it all just becomes white noise to you. So any criticism they hear at this point is, oh, it's just, it's just our critics, it's just our critics. No, there are some real problems going on right now. And I think that press conference yesterday at Queen's Park with Bob Chiarelli uh, is a perfect example of how arrogant this government has gotten. Uh, there are some serious issues. The Auditor General is pointing them out and he has the audacity to question her numbers. Yeah, because how could she understand? She's just a dumb little woman. Well, I, I don't know. You know, uh, and Shirelli is not a good example of someone who has been friendly to the people of Ontario. I can tell you, trying to nail him down for an interview in the past under a couple of his different portfolios has been next to impossible. I don't think Kathleen Wynne has any choice but to... Well, not even rein him in. He has to go. This well, man well, is out of control. She does have a choice because she's got a majority government, and uh, he's not the only arrogant one in this government. Do you get the sense that she will do anything? I mean, if she's truly listening to the people of Ontario, she should have been out front and center yesterday saying, we will deal with this. She, she's nowhere to be seen. Look, she's still got three and a half years left at the God very help least. Us. God help yeah. us. Yeah, and so in that sense, I mean, where is this AG report going to be down the road when, uh, you know, the election uh, takes place again? So I don't think that she necessarily has to get rid of him because, frankly, there hasn't been a mandate to date, uh, which is to say all that criticism that you talk about, it's not like, you know, we were chirping her shoe selection here. We were talking about big things. Were. Like, no, like the gas plant scandal, like e health. Like Mars, the gas like plant orange. scandal to me is not even a big scandal anymore because now you've got the $8 billion wasted on infrastructure spending that was pointed out yesterday. You've got the $75 billion shortfall in this defined pension that gets added to the debt. Uh, you've got uh, billions missing in energy, which I don't even think we've even started to scratch the surface on. And I know that there are parents struggling, parents who have disabled children, parents who have kids that have autism are being completely ignored. And this is the government that's supposed to care? Well, there are, there are certain things in that report which I think you could have a debate about as to, and I don't even think it's going to be a long debate, but you know, if we had gone contracting out with a lot of this infrastructure stuff, we would have saved this much, but of course jobs would but be lost. But it doesn't even sound like blah, they checked. Blah, blah. Like, it doesn't seem, like, I, I think no. you can have a relationship between the private and public sector, but you have to have someone who's business savvy enough to say, that doesn't make sense. You're going to carry the losses on this or and that. And that's not even the hugest issue on yeah. that, in that report. So, I, you know, I think that's saying something about what the list of priorities are. You can have that debate and you can say, look, we should clean things up and maybe we should do more contracting out. Uh, and again, I don't think it's going to be a very long debate, but when all of this is overshadowed by, I'm sorry, Trelli looked like an ass yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you, we can't even have that discussion. It gets lost. So you talk about where's the outrage? There's way too much to be upset I know, there's about. Too much, and the only one that people I think really understand is their hydro bill, Sorry. which hasn't yeah. even actually started to go up to where it's supposed to go up 46%. Mine started creeping up in the mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. um, in the next couple of years, people are going to start to really start to feel it. I mean, it, it, this is where it's going to hurt people. They don't think about the $8 billion loss. They don't think about the $75 because people can't get their heads around it. 
but they understand when their hydro bill goes up to a thousand dollars a month. Certainly, uh, look, we had a mild summer the, uh, this summer in Toronto, and I had an identical hydro bill to the summer before, which was a scorcher. You know, you call up hydro and you say, "Why is this happening?" Well, we're trying to even it out for you. What does that even mean? Okay. I've been forced to get the smart meter over here because you projected six hundred million dollars of savings in fifteen uh, years for them, not for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there were five hundred plus million dollars off the mark. I don't think it's just about contracting out. It's just about thinking through these processes and these policies and I mean, where are they getting their numbers from? It seems like every single uh, di dimension of their energy policies have been total failures. As Christina B Blizzard accurately pointed out today, everything that they touch turns to crap. Everything they touch turns to crap. Like literally everything they have done has turned to crap. And I don't know anybody who can actually admit to voting for them because now I think the reality is setting in that, that they were fooled. I mean, at what point? Uh, well, they were scared too. I think Tim Hudak uh, scared a lot of people off. That probably didn't the help. But in, in hindsight, everything he said mm -hmm. was true. He spoke truth, and he didn't get voted for that. Whereas people were sold a bill of goods with this premier, and they rewarded her with majority. I mean, in three years, can you imagine what this province is going to look like? Oh, I don't know. I really hope she can turn it around. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, okay, I, she's right on track. Well, no, but the auditor general even said, even if she does balance the budget, the numbers are so high. That each of us would have to pay 23 grand just to fix their mistakes. Yeah, I think she's got a lot of work to do. No question about it. She has to get ahead of the numbers, and that, what I'm concerned about is is the tone. Uh, is that if she's spending more time trying to do damage control, and I, I don't even know if there's well, well, an the effort thing, to do damage I'll, control I'll at this point. Here's where she's going. She's distracting people with arguments with the prime minister, issues like dealing with mm -hmm. prostitution laws, and no one's in the media. It's going to become the media because the opposition is useless. The media now has to do every day, go there and say, we don't want to talk about that. How are you going to well, balance Well, someone the wants books? to talk about it. Look, the reason she brought up the prostitution law is because she was asked about it. She didn't decide she was going to call a news conference and say, well, she could have I said, said it's not a priority exactly. right now. I have to get this province. She ignored Don Drummond. She's ignored every piece of advice that this government has been given. And we're heading for another downgrade. And I mean, I'm just wondering, at what point do I see the protests? I mean, at what point is she going to come out and be real with Ontarians and say, look, I have to make cuts. Well, I've got I, to raise your taxes, and I've got to make cuts to the public sector. Period. No, and that's going to be that's going to be really interesting because uh, when the next budget comes around, she's going to have to grapple with how she's going to handle this. Uh, again, she's moving full bore ahead with the pension reforms. Uh, <laughs> Twenty four hours out before yeah. this comes. I out. mean, literally. I mean, it's laughable, as Matt Gurney pointed out. You need a real good mirror. I mean, you want to say you're worried about us saving money? Yeah, but at the same time, uh, I haven't I haven't completely opposed. Even though it's going to have a huge impact on me being technically self-employed, uh, and I'm thinking in the future, I'm like, you know what? I I have thought I should probably be putting more anyway. Uh, so this would take pressure off me. Really? To you, you trust you trust this government to uh, manage? They, they, they know how to handle your money better than you do. Well, actually, the so far the the pension numbers have been pretty good as far as um, the federal. If they look to a federal model, I'm not as worried because the federal government does do a pretty good job when it comes to returns. Uh, whether or not they'll do the same thing, I don't know. But again, that's not my biggest concern right now, but what it does look good. What is your biggest concern? Uh, whether or not they will start to accept valid criticism, not just from people who have been traditional opponents, but from other people, from the economists, from uh, you know the pundits and Matt Gurney, and, uh, you know that kind of thing. Where because when she's lost people like you, yeah, you know, she's in trouble. Well, well, she, she, she never really had me to. I, you know, I would back her. Uh, I didn't vote for for the party. And this argument that she's nice has never washed with me because no. I don't. I, I mean, they're all nice. They're all nice one on one. You know it, and I know it. Tim was very nice. Horvath is very nice. I, don't, all nice. I don't care for nice. Bottom politicians. line is the tone. The tone has changed from every reporter I know who was there yesterday. They've also it's really changed. You can't get access to her all of a sudden. She's not talking to anybody, and uh, the arrogance you can just smell it in the halls of Queens Park. This is the most damning AG report that I have ever seen, and folks like Christina Blizzard much more seasoned than myself uh, at Queens Park. And the interpretation and slant has been totally off the mark. And frankly, I think when it comes to the media, when it comes, I'm not talking about from within her own party. When it comes to the media and us, the voting populace, I don't think it's a partisan issue. I think folks just get it. This is wrong. This is gross abuse of power over the purse. And something's got to change. But does it actually have to change? Because again, she's got her majority. So technically, I know. I she just, can carry on. Uh, I don't think she quo. wants to do a bad job. You know, and we can again, we <laughs> the can evidence have, speaks out the well, Exactly. And she's going to have to turn things around. And she's going to have to start managing her team better. Because uh, when 
She should have been people, out in front of this herself yesterday. She should have spoken probably. to the people of Ontario and said, up there. I will fix this. Because the bottom line is, there are people there, it would, again, I go back to those parents and those who don't make a lot of money. They're the ones who are going to get screwed with this. And they are being mm -hmm. screwed. All right, I got to break it there. You don't